Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. I am delighted to be joined by the wonderful Jesse. Uh, we loved his movie at the film festival. Um, and for those, if you've seen the safety plan, or if you haven't seen it, here's a clip. Excuse me. Were you on the flight with me to New York this past summer that was delayed for eight hours? Yes. I see you decided to move to LA after all. How's it going? It's, it's great. Amazing. Oh my God. Now that you're here, you should totes be one of my gays. Oh, are you a collector? <laughs> We're not Pokemon, you know. Um, Jesse, I'm, I, I wish I'd give you a big virtual, well, I'd give you a virtual hug. I wish I could say how great your film, but good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you, and and thank you for for bringing bringing us your your, your wondrous film to us. Um, we loved it very much, and I have so many questions. Uh, but for those that haven't seen it, tell us the brief synopsis of your film. Uh, the Safety Plan is a series about a socially inept New Yorker who relocates to LA amid an existential crisis in search of a chosen family in the LGBTQIA community and quickly learns that starting over again isn't the fantasy he thought it'd be. So it's just sort of his like Wizard of Oz-esque, a uh, gritty everyday life version of like the Wizard of Oz where he like meets his chosen family along the way. But it's also a story about like learning to be okay on your own and not le le learning to have relationships without your whole existence depending on, an identity depending on who you're surrounded with and who your friends are and that kind of thing. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, where did the inspiration come for you in thinking, I want to turn this into a film? Um, I had kind of been wanting to do something about, not exactly self-help, but like starting over again, because the movies always, and TV shows also like do so many of these and they make it look so easy and they make it look like uh, the minute you decide you want a different life, everything just falls into place. And they yeah. never really show like the gritty part of it. And that to me is always the best part. Um, and even in television shows, there's all like friends, there's always like an episode where they flash back to how they all met each other. And the whole show seems so unrealistic, except for that one episode. I was like, that's kind of how life works. Yeah, actually. yeah. Um, but also I moved to New York when I was 20 uh, and didn't know anybody and hadn't graduated college. and I kind of had to do the like, this kind of journey on my own without really knowing anybody, not having any inner circles and not having a lot of access to like people that were like me and the kinds of crowds I wanted to roll in. I just kind of had to meet who I met along the way. And um, it was really hard back in those days. Uh, but then when I relocated to Los Angeles, uh, I guess four years ago, um, I, I knew more people and I was more established and I had friends, but it was still extremely hard. And I thought, God, could you imagine like doing this like in your late twenties? What a nightmare that would be. And I thought, oh, that'd actually be a really hilarious premise for a show. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where the inspiration came from. I, Starting I, over again later later in life and not being as glamorous as you had hoped it would be. No, I I love it. And 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 I, I also moved around the same age to New York. So I know that whole feeling and how that feels. It's a it's a big move to move to New York um anyway, regardless of what age you're at, to be honest. Um you had some fantastic like actors though. I was like, you know, there were so many distinctive characters and and it just made it ever more enjoyable. Like every time a new character would pop in, I'd be so curious about it. Like it was a brilliant cast. How did you bring your cast together? Um, I actually just got really lucky. Uh, I cast everybody through Actors Access. Uh, this was an extremely low budget project, so I, I kind of can't even believe I got the actors that I got. Um, but yeah, they all just came through Actors Access. I didn't know any of them beforehand. I'd never worked with any of them beforehand. Uh, I really lucked out. It was really funny with uh, the main character, Weston. Yeah. There were so many people that came in and everyone like, the tone of this is so dry and all the actors that came in played him kind of like a jerk. And I was like, oh God, do people think this character is just <laughs> an awful person? That's not what I intended. Like, yeah, he's got his cynicisms and his issues, but I don't want people to think that I'm just making a celebration of this asshole. That's not what I want my show to be. But Spencer was the only person that came in. It was Spencer Pius, who's the main actor. He's the only one that came in that just absolutely nailed it. So everyone else that came in just wasn't right for the role. And I saw maybe like, 60 people 
Uh, I had originally cast my first roommate in Los Angeles, uh, and at the time I thought, he's not right for the part. He's, he's got a good look and he's got a good like screen presence, but he's just too, there has to be like a combination of like vulnerability, but also this hardness and this jadedness and this yeah. anger about him. And no, but everyone played him like a jerk or they played him too soft and like Spencer just like nailed it on his first audition. He actually sent me, um, a uh, clip from the first episode that he had filmed with somebody and it, he was like laying in the position his character was supposed to be laying in when I imagined it in my head. It was just perfect for the role. So no, I really he, he did a great job. He did a fantastic job, you know, and I, and I think he is, I love that he's, you know, obviously he was dealt with a lot of people that came into his world um, in the film and, you know, he was just even just watching how he reacted to certain situations to people, like he had it in the look and the way that he was moving, yeah. the way the camera was with him, it was, he played brilliantly with the camera. Um, what was, you know, I, I was, what as I was watching this, because it's kind of a little bit, a, a longer short film and it was almost like, almost felt almost episodic, it was great, I was like, give me more, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I was enjoying this journey that was going on. Um, but I was like, my goodness me, there's a lot of different scenes here in different places. And I thought you had a job under your hands, you know, moving around a little bit. How was that experience for you? Well, it is episodic, actually. That was my intention. I had originally planned to film nine of these and like edit it together as a feature. Um, but then there came this weird thing of like, well, if you, I was really inspired by Issa Rae and uh, the creators of High Maintenance. That's kind of the vibe I was going for. And they both like started in the web series world and then adapted to HBO and HBO is like my dream place. Yeah. Um, but one thing that I, uh, we d the budget was so low that we couldn't afford to shoot it all at once. So like we would shoot like basically a segment per season we shot the first, the second, the third episode, and then we shot all the therapy intros last. And it was about almost a two year process to shoot oh, wow. all of this. Well, actually not to shoot, maybe like with post-production, it was a little over two years. Um, but yeah, we just had to space it out. So I just, as I could save money or get a little grant here and there from Hollywood Foreign Press Association or through uh, the school I attended, LACC, I was able to save up money, but then we spend that money and then have to like, raise more money to shoot the rest of the episode. So it was a really weird, long process. I was actually kind of inspired by that movie, uh, Boyhood. The yeah. Richard Linklater movie, because he shot that over the course of 13 years, which I yeah. definitely did not want to spend 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> but my plan at first was like, oh, nine episodes, this will be easy. And by the third episode, I was like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. We can't go yeah. on like this. I should just make three of them and release it and see where it goes. So that's you the state I'm in now. Did you shoot it in, in sequence? Um, I guess in terms of the episodes we did, but the therapy intros were the last thing we shot. So everything else, I guess, was in sequence. Yeah, yeah. No, well, I mean, I, I, well, it's funny you mentioned High Farm Press and, and, and your school as well, because they're both people we actually work with and they're fantastic. So I'm glad that they supported you on your journey. Um, yeah. Now, what was, what was just fascinating to me as well is just the, the, the evolving of, of Western, you know, um, is, 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 is really quite something. And you, you really kind of, you know, he almost, you know that there's probably people watching this that have almost uh, experienced some of these relationships. You know, I, I certainly know what it feels like to sort of be the, you know, gay best friend, you know what I mean? And that whole kind of feeling of just, you know, how you're even just put in that kind of weird box, you know? Yeah. Um, was you, what did you kind of like want your audience to take from the film? Um, I mean, I hope people take from it that learning to be okay on your own. Like that, what an exciting journey that is to be on your yeah. own. You know, I think so, I think there's just so much pressure from everywhere where it comes from. Every single thing you watch is about dating. Every single magazine you see, the, like, every single thing is like, look hotter so you can find a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Look this way, how to find, how to, you know, like there's just so much pressure and so much stigma around being alone. And yeah. you know, we come into this world alone and we leave this world alone. And that's, yeah. Doesn't matter, but like that's not necessarily a bad thing. Being on your own can be really empowering and interesting. Another movie that I was really inspired by that uh, provoked this project was that movie uh, Into the Wild, which was based oh, yeah. on a real thing. And like, you know, there's n there's so few movies about being on your own and being alone. It's a hard thing to capture in a two-hour movie or oh, even a show. So I kind of found the perfect outlet to. Uh, be able to express this journey because the character is kind of like an anthology series almost. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah. episode is a new person along his journey to like self-discovery and that yeah. kind of thing. 
thing. So well, I, I love that. I love that he he. That was exactly why I loved it. Is that it was okay to like you know discover yourself, discover the people you want to connect with, discover who you don't want to connect with, discover who you have a connection with, and people that maybe they're not right for your world or your life and everything else. And right. I think that's very powerful because it's always you know we can't really. There's not what one thing that was so wonderfully unique about Jesse is what it's always about you know, connecting with others or other people. And of course we want to, we want to have those, but it's okay to be okay with yourself too. And to yeah. be in yourself and discover yourself. And so it was really unique. And especially in a place like New York city, which is hard enough as it is anyway, um, yeah. to sort of get through the world. Um, I, I just say the greatness is, is that I, is, I don't want to put pressure on you, but I did want more. Okay. I did want more mood. I did want good to hear. I was enjoying these characters and I was like, no, oh, give me some more. So, um, it was really wonderful to have and we got you got a great reaction um at our film festival which was fantastic and we've had people on social media inquiring about it uh, uh, since too yeah. um which is great so what was what's it been like after you know a two-year effort of projects and putting it together what's it like to put out to film festivals and how's that experience been for you um well i would have never imagined that i'd be premiering this in the middle of the apocalypse right I, <laughs> you know i just never would have imagined that no uh, who would, actually, right? I, been like rewriting or I've kind of finished the pilot finally after many drafts I guess almost like a year and a half ago uh and I've been applying to like writers workshops I'm kind of on the fence about getting in uh or waiting to hear if I got into not but now I'm like what would it be great to like rewrite it from the perspective of he moves here and then COVID-19 breaks this because I mean my roommate yeah. he moved here in March from Texas doesn't know any, but kind of the same journey, but like, I can't imagine moving here in the middle of this pandemic. And now there's a political uprising, which is great and I support yeah. the pledge, but like, what a crazy thing. It's, it's madness. It's yeah. madness. And it's, it's something that, you know, goodness me, we'll, 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 we'll never forget. So it is in a very interesting time and it's consistently evolving. Well, I, I want to see that one too. So, you know, please, <laughs> please do that for sure. Um, cause this is a, a very interesting place in LA to, to be in during this time as well, or anywhere, New York too. Yeah. Um, what, so that, that is, is that what you're kind of working on next at the moment? Um, yes, I'm actually, uh, this is the first year of my life where I don't have like narrative scripted projects lined up. I actually have more like, not reality show, but more unscripted kind of things. Uh, one of the producers, uh, that helped me do this, Shannon Morton, and she's the, girl character is kind of based her personality not as her personality is based off her not she's not that great. <laughs> uh, um she started uh we had been working on several projects together for years uh and then all this happened and she kind of created a non-profit out of thin air called black women lead and it's taken off and she's done collaborations with the laugh factory and it i mean it's not even been it's actually just been a month this week but it's been so successful so i'm doing media stuff for her, but I also helped her write um, a pilot that she created about her experience being uh, the only black family in an all white conservative town in uh, upstate California. Um, so we're kind of making a documentary about this like political uprising about her journey into activism. Um, so that's kind of what I'm working on now. And then I, uh, I'm creating more like YouTube stuff and stuff like that. I'm still doing narrative stuff, but this is the first year of, now because of the pandemic, we can't shoot anything narrative at the moment. No. So uh, it's a completely different wheelhouse for me, but it's really exciting. And I, yeah. it's nice to branch out to something completely different that also doesn't require just my ideas all the time. Like I'm yeah. working with other people's ideas and it's really exciting and new, so. It's a good, it's good when you've got your team, isn't it? And, and yeah. a good team and, and people that you can collaborate with and share each other's um, ideas and thoughts. And so I'm glad that you're still being productive uh, during this time and keeping it going. Um, what I really also like, I'm obviously, this was part of uh, our, you know, our Pride Month um, film festival as well. And, you know, I just think that, you know, in terms of what in our community and, and, the, and the, the kind of work uh, of film that gets put out there, like, I feel like you're really taking it into the new, you know, the, the, the proper new century of, of, of what we see. You know, it wasn't just the same old kind of story. You had some depth of character and, you know, oh, so happened to be, you know, gay or whatever it is, you know, and, and it, it wasn't like the, is that, was that something you kind of wanted to, you know, have also as part of your work at, you know at, for this kind of film you absolutely know, what, you know, i mean i get i think the idea that i i mean i had to figure out how to distinguish myself from other filmmakers to begin with so i was like well what what isn't being seen and what 
what I like to see. Um, I maybe it's not nice to say, but I do, I, I find myself very frustrated with a lot of LGBTQI films that get financed because they're all about they're either about oppression or they're camp, and there's no in between. And it's like, yeah, I there are tragic aspects of being gay and frustrating part, aspects of being gay, but there's nothing just about everyday gay people existing that isn't like about something that's relatable to everyone. And yeah. also I kind of find this frustration with the only films that get financed about LGBTQIA people. There are always coming out movies and they present this like fantasy of when you come out, the rest of your life just falls into place. And I totally bought into that narrative when I was younger. Yeah. And when I moved to New York and thought, oh, I'm, you know, you're gonna come out and everything's just gonna be great. And I was just like, oh my God, this is so much more complicated than I thought yeah. it would be. You know, there's so many different things about queer life that I just never expected. I don't, yeah. You know, I think people become really jaded because they feel alone in those experiences. So I wanted to make something that is empathetic, but not sappy and yeah. trains a well, lot of like, that. I think it was great. I think it, you know, it was really refreshing actually. So, you know, I'm, I'm commending on, on your choices and your writing for sure. Um, just last but not least, um, anyone that's kind of watching in our audience, um, you know, budding filmmakers, emerging filmmakers, is there anything that you've learned um, that maybe a mentor has told you or something you go by as, as a filmmaker that you could share with our audiences? Um, I love the Lena Waithe quote, keep making dope shit until somebody notices. That's, yes, I love that. <laughs> that's the most, I mean, I've never heard it put better. That's exactly, nobody's, I'm kind of in a weird stage because I didn't finish school. Part of the reason I didn't finish school the first time was I was living in North Carolina. I thought if I go to a university, a four-year university, this was during the recession. And I thought I'm going to be swamped in student debt and I'll never be able to make a film. Everyone that has like, is like a film major in North Carolina at that time uh, was settling for jobs. because like, I have to pay off those Sally May loans. And I thought I, I went, I almost finished uh, community school in Wilmington, North Carolina. And I thought I'm better off just moving to New York or Los Angeles on my own and like yeah. getting my own education, being self-educated for the moment. Uh, and then going back to school, but I think so many people, film is just such a tricky industry. I think when you go to school for film, you're like, okay, well, I've got a degree. I'm going to become Martin Scorsese. And that's just yeah. not how it works. Yeah. You have to keep making stuff. Yeah. Um, and you have to make a certain amount of shitty films as well. I've yeah. definitely made my share of shitty films and shitty screenplays and that kind of thing. I'm finally getting to a stage where my work is accepted and being well received. Um, but just keep making dope shit until somebody notices. Oh, nobody's God. breathing down your back like this isn't like there's not a need for there is a need for filmmakers but not in the same way that there's a need for nurses or teachers or that kind of thing mm. we you know nobody's breathing down your back saying when's your film coming out Just yeah yeah right for the college you have to keep making stuff and you have to do a lot of really uncomfortable trial and error and have a lot of really heartbreaking failures and that kind of thing but i think one thing that i think back on in my career that i feel so bad that I was hard on myself is at times where I was making shitty work I I wish I would have perceived it as well that's just level one like you've succeeded at level one if you're making shit you made something it sucks but you're at level one congratulations yeah. you just level one and you go on to the next level instead of beating myself up over it thinking oh, I'm the worst blah, blah, blah. you know like just I love that that's such a really good outlook it really is and you know I mean you're only as good as your next project anyway but it's like you know, I love all the advice that you that you share because it's so bad and it's actually stuff that we don't really share around because we, you know, but we need to hear it, you know. So, yeah, thank you for your, your that was a TED talk for filmmakers, right? <laughs> <laughs> and well, thank you. Um, no, really good. Listen, um, you, you are, you do leave us wanting more. So we, we I do require more work, more films, please. Uh, thank you. Great. Um, but no, thank you, Jesse. Thank you for your work. And, uh, and I'm really looking forward to, uh, see you just move on on your up and on your journey. So thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.